Welcome. Today we're going to be seeing why does the PEB change along a single demand curve? Suppose you get the, this data which represents the demand for one product depending on the price of the same product. Suppose we are decreasing the price from 9 to 8. That means that the price is being lowered by one monetary unit. As a consequence, the demand is increasing by one unit. Now suppose that we are reducing the price from 2 to 1. As well as before, this means that the price is being lowered by one monetary unit and the demand is increasing by one unit. A priori, by looking at this data, it seems like it doesn't really matter at what point of the demand we are. The demand reacts in the same way to a change in price. Now the key in here is the formula for the PV because the price elasticity of demand is measured as a percentage change in quantity demanded divided by a percentage change in price. In other words, it's a relative measure. Let's do this mathematical example. For the first case, demand will increase by one unit, but in relative terms, since we're going certainly moving from one to two units, it's increasing by 100%. The price is decreasing by one unit, that is true, but percentage terms is decreasing by 11.11%. We're moving from 9 to 8, in fact. As a consequence, the PED is calculated as minus 9, which is relatively elastic. Now let's do the following example. In the example where the price is being lowered from 2 to 1, that means that the quantity is increasing from 8 to 9. That increase in the quantity in percentage terms is measured as 12.5 percent we are increasing from 8 to 9 one extra unit over the previous existing quantity demand of 8 is a lot less in relative terms than one increase in quantity demanded over the first unit that is being consumed 12.5 percent divided by the decrease in price, which in this case is minus 50%, because we're moving from 2 to 1, therefore we're halving the price, means that the price elasticity of demand is measured at minus 0.25, which is relatively inelastic. As you can see from here, mathematically, we can, we can prove that the, uh, quant the price elasticity of demand changes along the demand curve. And it's all got to do with the relative percentage change in quantity and the relative percentage change in price. It's about the percentage change, it's not about the absolute change. Graphically, this can also be seen as follows. Same data, now we're going to plot the diagram. And we saw where we've seen it from this diagram, from these uh, figures that we've got, that for the price of 10, quantity demanded equals 0. For the price of zero, quantity demanded equals 10. Since it's a linear function, if we join these two dots, then we got the quantity demanded. Now this was follows. First, let's see what happens when we reduce the price from 9 to 8, when quantity increases from 1 to 2. We've calculated before. In here, this means that the quantity demanded has increased by 100%. The price has reduced by 11.11% and therefore the PED is equal to minus 9, which is relatively elastic. Okay. Then we do the next one. If we reduce the price from 2 to 1, that means that the price, uh, that the quantity has increased by 1 unit from 8 to 9 and in percentage terms is equal to 12.5% and the price has reduced from 2 to 1 which means that the price has reduced by 50%. The PED is equal to a minus 0.25, which is relatively inelastic. This has uh, consequences for firms, because firms will want to maximize their revenue, and their revenue is maximized when the PED is equal to 1. Why? Let's do as follows. When price equals 9, the revenue is equal to 9. Price times 
1, price equals 9, quantity equals 1, 9 times 1 equals 9. When we lower the price, it means the quantity is increasing relatively a lot. 8 times 2 equals 16. We're clearly better off now. If price equals 2 and quantity equals 8, revenue is equal 16, price equals, one, price equals 1 and quantity equals 9, revenue is equal to 9. In the first case, when our demand is relatively elastic, it makes sense to reduce our price in order to increase our revenue. When we have a relatively inelastic curve, we want to increase the revenue by increasing the price. If we decrease the price, as we can see in here, that means that the revenue falls. We can also represent it um, with, uh, with the arrows. If price falls, what is the logic behind? If price falls, that means that if the PD is relatively elastic, the increase in quantity is going to be much greater than that decrease in price. Therefore, as we are multiplying a decrease in price times a much larger increase in quantity, a total revenue for the firm will increase. This is the following case. For the same decrease in price, if the PED is relatively inelastic, that means consumers are not reacting a lot to that change in price, that means the quantity will now increase by very little. And therefore, the total revenue in this case is going to be falling. The point of all of this is how do consumers react? If consumers change a lot their quantity, it makes sense then to decrease the price because you entice many more consumers to buy. If consumers are not reacting to the price, then it makes sense to increase your prices because regardless of the increase in price, consumers are going to still buy, keep buying your goods. Not as many, but pretty much the same, very easy, very easy. Um, close to the uh, previous quantity because it's relatively inelastic. Therefore, it makes sense in that situation to increase your price. And this is why um, the demand curve changes its PED along the curve. And this is why um, we end up choosing a point that is halfway between relatively elastic, in which case we need to reduce the price to maximize revenue, and relatively inelastic, in which case we need to increase the price to increase the revenue. The halfway in between relatively elastic and relatively inelastic is a unitary elastic demand curve. And I hope you find this helpful. Please like or and leave one comment.